And Kyle Orton knocked around after he let the ball go, but appears to be just fine. Here's Keller, going deep right side, intended for Richardson. And incomplete. And Sean Petty is on the field still for Purdue, so apparently Paul Long not able to go, or at least not able to start the third quarter here. So Sean Petty, the junior out of Round Rock, Texas, is in there uh, at the other cornerback. Second down and 10. Richardson comes near side. Derek Egan is at the top of your screen. Drop ball. Burgess bounces it to the outside. Stiff arm across the 31st down Arizona State. My goodness, he's run well. He sure has. I mean, they, they've got some other productive from Preston Jones and Anton Salisbury, but it's been primarily... Rudy Burgess, and I think it's it's more his vision because he, he, he jumps it up in there, he sees there's a crease to the outside, and he uses the gifts that he has, the skills that he has. 100 yards now and 11 carries for Rudy Burgess, and it's his quickness and his vision that's gotten him those yards. And a first down and 10, Arizona State, trailing by six. Second man through. That's Burgess again. He's out near the 35. He'll spot it at the 34-yard line. Boy, that must take the wind out of Arizona State sails to give up a, a touchdown like that. Well, and as well as their defense played, I mean, they really were dominant in that first half. And, uh, you know, they kind of got surprised on that first play. And, and, and Purdue's pass offense is more of a sideline to sideline passing. They don't vertically stretch you as much. That was a vertical play, and they got right after him. On second down, here's Keller. Flips it. Zach Miller threw his hands. Incomplete. So uh, not having the kind of day that he envisioned. He is the Pac-10 freshman of the year, Zach Miller from suburban Phoenix. And his brother Brent is a redshirt freshman. The two are roommates. Brent also a tight end. Yeah. Zach Miller was recruited by everybody. I mean, he took visits to Oklahoma, Miami, Tennessee and chose to stay home, and primarily because of his brother. I mean, they're their best friends, and they wanted to play together. Here's Keller back. Got it. Nice catch at the 45. That's another first down. Oh, good catch. Good job of Keller hanging in there and throwing under pressure because there was pressure right up the gut on him, and he hung in there and made the throw. Hagan, another catch. Good, solid hands. That's nice. And Derek Hagan, we mentioned he might surpass all of the records posted by John Jefferson back in the 70s if he decides to come back for another year. 14 100-yard receiving games. First down and 10 at the 45. They keep it on the ground again, and uh, that's a two-yard game for Burgess. I had, the, I had the pleasure, Todd, of covering John Jefferson when he was a high school player in Dallas. He, when he was a sophomore at Arizona State, he changed his name. His name originally was John Washington. And as a sophomore, he took his mother's name of Jefferson. So there are pictures of him in the Arizona State hallways as John Washington and John Jefferson. And here's the, the kicker to the whole thing. He played for Lincoln High School. <laughs> so probably played at Roosevelt Junior High, for all I know. <laughs> oh, he was a great one. And there's a flag. Start a snap. False start on the offense. Number 83. Five yard penalty from the line of scrimmage. Remains second down. Burgraff, the H back. Dirk Cutter saying, What the H are you thinking? <laughs> Six penalty. Second and 14. 9 3. Here's Keller. Got a man open, wide open. This is Moe Mutz, number 18, first down Arizona State. That's the 34 yard line. That's a gain of 25. Just a four man rush that time. Good protection. Mutz running the post corner. And he's open. Watch, it's just a four man rush. It's going to be a nice pocket in here for Sam Keller. Not able to get to him. He's able to stay in there, find the matchup he wants, and then throw outside to Mutz. Now, do you know what Mutz's real name is? No. Henry. 
He disliked that name from the time he was very young, he, and he didn't want his brother and sister called him Moe and uh, Mo, and it turned to Moe, and he goes by Moe, not Henry. Here's Burgess. He goes by Reedy. I'm going to finish that because uh, he, gets called, he gets called Henry one time, and that's the first day of class when he goes in, the professor calls the roll and calls him Henry Mutz, and he goes right up and says it's Moe. Now, the one day, every class, he gets called Henry. Moe Mutz sounds like a comedian in the Catskills. <laughs> <laughs> so it's Moe. It's Moe. Started as Moe. <laughs> okay. Became Moe. No Henry. This is Sam. Started as Samuel. Shortened it. The three letters. Here's Keller. Oops. There is a flag. Mentioned a while ago, this is the Big East officiating crew. Please reset the 25 second clock to 25. The game clock will go on the snap. Second down. So, no flag, just a administrative procedure here. They reset the play clock. Joe Tiller, out of Montana State. He actually is from Toledo. Played his collegiate football. The wave is not dead. Now, you, you tell me the story about Moe Mutz. Do you know who started the wave? This is from the Department of Really Trivial Information. I do not know. Here's the handoff. And it's Salisbury down to the 20-yard line. At the University of Washington, a yell leader named Rob Weller, who later became the host of entertainment tonight, started the wave. Wow. I bet you didn't know you'd learn that coming to El Paso. I, I didn't know that. I, I just knew when I played in Kansas City and we used to go to Seattle to play, that was where it was the worst, yeah. inside that kingdom. <laughs> I didn't know it started up there, though. Well, you can really dazzle your friends at back home in Canton when you get there. Reverse is fumbled. And Terry Richardson falls on it. Tried to catch him with a little misdirection. They've got momentum. They're moving the football. Tried to get that Purdue defense running one way and come back the other way and just a, a bad exchange between Burgess and Richardson. And Arizona State very fortunate to come up with the football. So the turnover there would have really been uh, costly as well as they've moved the football here. That is a loss of seven. It's second down and 17. 9-3, the difference in the ball game. The first play of the third quarter, an 80-yard touchdown pass. Here's Keller with a play fake. Pulls it in. He's going deep for Hagen in the end zone. Oh, oh my gosh. Touchdown. <laughs> That's interference and a touchdown. I mean, <laughs> wow. 27-yard pass. Boy, the thing you see about Hagen is his strength as a receiver. I mean, he is not the fastest guy, but very strong. Hard to knock off his routes. Hard to get the ball out of his hands. We've seen him hold on to the football after getting hit hard a couple times. And Sam Keller, very happy with his receiver on that one. Remember Sam Keller telling us? He was a little more fiery and emotional than Andrew Walter. And he finds Derek Hagen for a touchdown. We're tied with the extra point to come. Fine play by Derek Hagan on his 10th touchdown reception of the year. Now Ainsworth for the extra point to give ASU the lead. Got it. Nine minutes and 59 seconds to go, third quarter. Derek Hagan, 27 yards from Sam Keller. The heck with the flag. 10-9, <laughs> Sun Devils. Ha, 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 ha.